pop icon Peter Max is as colorful as his paintings. His career took off in the 1960s, and he remains a prolific artist. He and I met at the Wentworth Gallery in Hackensack, where he was autographing some of his famous work. When I look at the paintings, it's almost like everything is a fantasy. Yeah. In the, in the use of color that you're known for, is that really what the paintings are about? When They're you're painting, all, is it like a fantasy? It, it really is. You know, something when I when I start a painting, I don't want to know what I'm painting. All I want to do is I pick up a color, I'm going to put it like in the upper right hand corner. Then I want to match it with something else, I put it in other. But once I've got a bunch of colors, then something wants to happen and I go along with it. So it's not like I start out and say, oh, I'm going to do two profiles next to each other. But I may sometimes pick up a brush and do a profile and then I'll decide to do another one and that's how it happens. I let the, it occur, just like a jazz musician sometimes sits down and he just dabbles. And before you know it, he repeats it and repeats it, and suddenly people go, hey, what's the name of the tune? He says, I don't know, I just, I just started it. <laughs> You're very influenced by music. I am, yeah. Is that Always your good. greatest inspiration? It's one of my big inspirations is music. The, the big inspiration, I guess, is the will to paint. I've got that will to be creative. And the other thing is I love music around me. And sometimes it's nice to have nice company next to me and so forth and so on. And uh, it kept, keeps me like really in a, in a very nice mood all the time. I'm always in a creative mood and like very up, you know, up and positive about everything. Because you can see by my colors, they're all positive. Where does the, all the positive energy that you've had for years come from? I mean, is it from when you were a child? And it was a very international life that you had. Yeah. It was not an easy one in the beginning, sir. Well, it was actually, for me, as a child, it was great. I grew up in Shanghai from the age of one till I was 10. My father was a good businessman in Shanghai, so we were very lucky. <coughs> so living in Asia, you know, with the Chinese influence is unbelievable. It's an amazing culture, unbelievable, highly creative. And highly colorful. Hi highly colorful and super creative, you know, and uh, I really started drawing because all my little Chinese friends would draw on the floors with, with chalk, <laughs> and so I would just do it too. I never knew I would become an artist because my interest was tremendous, tremendous about astronomy. Once I heard an astronomer talk, and he talked about the vastness of the universe, there was nothing that could compare to that, and there's nothing that compares to it. So I wanted to, you know, get out of high school and study mathematics, and learn how uh, learn about astronomy, and then one of my friends, whose brother owned an ad agency, sent young Ron to art school at the Art Students League on 57th Street in Manhattan, and he said, "Come, come on, you go to artist. You're like the best artist in school. Why don't you come with me?" So I went for the summer, and I got hooked. And I asked my mother and father if I could stay, and I wanted to stay, and I stayed for for a whole winter, and then I stayed for another year, another year, another year, six and a half years. And my art teacher was this great Irish guy by the name of Frank J. Riley. And when he studied in the same classroom where he was now a teacher, you know who sat next to him for seven years? Norman Rockwell. Can you imagine? Yeah. So Rockwell and Riley painted the same way. And I learned how to paint like Rockwell. I can paint that kind of realism. But when I started painting, I, liked, I went into my own thing. It's like a classical guy, maybe loving jazz. But it's interesting because when you think of American painters, you think of Rockwell, and now you think of Peter Max. Amazing. How did you know what was going to hit, really what the public was going to like? I'm thinking about the love mm -hmm. icon in the 60s that became synonymous with the whole era. How did you know drawing something this, people are going to respond to this, this I, is going to hit? I, you know, I never did that. I never did something that I thought that people would love. I just did what I liked. And like, it was always personal, you know, like between me and it. And then I found out that the public loved it. But I still just did what was between me and it. I did not do what public loved because then I would get sidetracked. And you would lose yourself? I would lose myself. I would forget, you know, like, who was I painting for? Because I was just painting for me. The two things, he's a budding artist, but my husband was a World Trade Center victim. Oh. So we want to thank you for what you're oh. doing. I'm so and we sorry were, about we were that. thinking we would ask you to commission to do a painting for us, but we love the angel.
Oh, so we good. got the angel. Can you ever go oh, into nice. a dark mood? Do you ever feel I, somber? To, you know? No, I, 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 no? I, I can't. No, I can't. I, I, I don't want to, and I can't. I, I never. I have never done a dark painting. Never. Never. I, mean, I can't remember. And the paintings reflect your mood, or is it? Is it what you know people want from you at this point? Oh no, or? it's nothing about what people want. It's what how I feel and what I like to do. It's very personal, like that, those, those 20, 30 minutes or hour or two that I'm on, on a canvas. It's just like a, it's like a dance. You know, it's like it's a creative moment, the music's playing, and I'm in a mood, and I go, wow, just I like these colors, hmm, it needs a little bit of light red and some green, and so I'll go for some light red and green and change my mind. And I've sometimes taken a canvas where I did the abstract, kind of like laid the colors down, and turn the, color, the camera sideways or upside down and continue, you know, because it's just like, a, oh, I like the composition upside down better, so let me recompose. Most of the paintings here, I innovate them as I go along, and that's the greatest thing about pure creativity, is to, is to just, you know, be creative. And it's like when somebody dabbles, you know, in music. Here I did once um, the painting of a landscape, and then I did four others because I wanted to turn it into four seasons. But I didn't know I was doing it. I just did like, you know, spring, summer, fall and winter, you know. And, but it happened sort of automatically by itself. You know, at first I just did one and then I added another season to it. And then I tried to do the next one. It just happened. Or when I did uh, the, the, the profile ladies up there or that lady holding planet Earth. This is an angel. But instead of having wings on the back, she's got the wings on the side of her head. Because there was no room to put wings uh, in the painting. And then she held the planet, like, so it's an angel loving planet Earth, you know, like the, our little goddess. Yes. You know, and so I make up these little stories in my mind. Did you have any idea that this could happen? No. no. Did you want to be famous? I didn't even know that it was in, in the cards for me. I didn't think that was possible.